What's going on everybody? Welcome to Master Wing. Today we have a tournament game for you. Uh, hopping right into the gameplay. We were a little late on hitting the record button, but as you can see we are two turns in and we kept four birds in our starting hand. All we've done is played the painted white start and gained food. So currently, currently we have two worms in our supply and I just thought we had some easy birds that we could get down. Uh, with Sabi's Warbler, we have the Phoebe, and then I also kept the Northern Mockingbird just in case there's a, a really good brown power that I need to repeat. Uh, this is a tournament game. Uh, we are in round two, I believe. This is the Ultramarine Lorikeet Lollapalooza. I think I pronounced that right. Uh, the tournament names are crazy. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to join the Wingspan Tournament Discord. There are tournaments going all the time. It's really fun. Um, there's just something a little bit more intense, maybe. Um, all, all the games I like to treat as a competitive game, but when you're going for tournament bragging rights or, or whatever, it just uh, adds that much more fun to the game of Wingspan, in my opinion. So I will add this video to the tournament playlist. If you want to check out my other tournament games, uh, please do so. They are usually entertaining, um, but we are still in pursuit to win our first tournament. Uh, we've been in a lot. We've been in the finals, but we haven't secured a tournament victory. Uh, let me talk about this gameplay. Uh, this is a post-game commentary. Uh, we were, like I said, aggressive with keeping four birds in our starting hand. There wasn't anything great in the tray, and if you saw what I just drew, we got a wood duck, and a raven all in one turn. Um, this is where I'm, I'm a little hesitant on which direction to go. Uh, my opponent has a great uh, wetlands going. He's got great card access. Uh, we have three birds down pretty quickly and I'm trying to win a four point advantage for the sets of three eggs in the first round. Sometimes that goal is a little bit tricky uh, to go for in the first round. But at this point, I'm kind of wavering. Uh, I, I don't know whether to go Wood Duck or Raven. But if you can see the end of round goals, I'm, I'm leaning at this point towards Wood Duck because it's not a super egg heavy game. Uh, we have done several games. It would be very easy for me to just shoot the uh, Chihuahuan Raven in the grasslands, go with the fast grass approach and work Sabi's Warbler raven back and forth and forget about the forest but i'm i'm i really want to try something different this time uh i have all these forest birds i've got the mockingbird i've got a a wood duck the white-backed woodpecker and so even though i've got one of the power four birds in my hand i'm thinking about not using it uh we go ahead and gain food here uh, i don't want to play a bird and lose an egg because I want to win the end of round goal. So really we're just stockpiling into round two. My opponent, uh, Alexandra, Alexandra Woohoo, um, we have gone back and forth. Uh, I won the first game, he won the second game. This is game three uh, of round two in this tournament. And round one is over. We are flying through this game with some edited footage. My opponent plays a grassland, I mean a, a forest bird, and he's also got that barn swallow. We are gonna go ahead and play white-backed woodpecker first. The only downside about wood duck sometimes when I get it is that it's difficult to play. Sometimes you can't get a berry or sometimes you can't find two seeds in your starting hand. And uh, I think that woodpecker in the long run is um, going to not only let me get the wood duck down faster, but uh, it'll help me with food generation as we hope to draw some big point bird bombs. That is my strategy normally when I am going for the wood duck approach. Some of you are staring at that Chihuahuan Raven right now and just saying, man, just stick it in the grassland, go easy, go with the fast grass approach. And we're not doing it. We're going wood duck. My boy Woody. Um, I'm thinking we add the mockingbird to the wood duck and repeat the 
uh, wood duck card drawing abilities. Even now with the woodpecker, I could reroll the bird feeder and try for another seed, but I'm I really just I don't want to slow down anymore. Um, we're already approaching the end of round two, and you know sometimes I'm putting the wood duck in first play of the game, and uh, now it, it's a little late, and I just I don't mind forcing down the wood duck in this situation. I'm gonna have plenty of food uh, because we're gonna be gaining food. The majority of the game. Uh, the end of round goal is food and personal supply. Uh, and here we go. Let's draw two bonus cards right now. That will work. And we're also looking out for food web expert cards. That's our bonus card. We've already got four points uh, on the board for, uh, excuse me, bonus points. And bonus cards or food, I mean, uh, worm birds are fine with me. Uh, we do have an egg issue. That's what I'm seeing as I'm reviewing this game. Uh, to play this mockingbird, I'm going to have to take an unproductive turn and lay eggs. Uh, and there goes the raven. We are committed to forest action. We have several wood duck games on this channel. Um, it's just one of my favorite birds. It's a little unconventional and a lot of times it turns into a pivot. So we will see how we manage the rest of the game here, but we are winning the end of round goal and we're finally set up. The, my only concern is, um, are we going to draw the necessary birds with the wood duck? Because it's great to draw cards in the forest. New players, it's one of the best forest birds in the original game because you don't need a wetlands. However, if you draw a bunch of birds that you really don't need, uh, it's useless. So uh, we did top deck a couple bonus card birds a uh, couple turns ago, the red cockaded woodpecker and the king rail. So I'm hoping to see some acceleration as far as points on the scoreboard. My opponent, uh, I was talking through it, but as soon as I discarded that Chihuahuan Raven, he played the Common Raven in his grassland, so now it's a game. Uh, just adds to the intensity of this competitive play. Like I said, with tournament games, it's just a little bit more fun, in my opinion, uh, if you're a competitive person. And obviously, if, if you're proceeding throughout the tournament and you're advancing, you know, you're playing better players, you're playing the 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 players that win uh simply put so theoretically you know as you move throughout the bracket you're gonna be playing the best and for me that that adds an extra level of fun anyway uh we're gonna go ahead and repeat the wood duck in hopes to draw something good we pick up a snowy owl which isn't the best bonus card bird but it is something and uh, the snowy owl is able to lay an egg as well. So I'm thinking with two rats in my supply right now that a snowy owl play may occur. And we've got three bonus card birds out of our four. And when you're playing against a raven player, you got to start winning uh, these end of round goals. Not always. There's always exceptions to the rule. But you got to find ways to score because we're not getting that that egg generation that he's going to be getting. Uh, there's a roseate spoonbill in the tray, so that makes me want to gain food again. Uh, and there's so many birds in my well, not so many birds. There's four birds in my hand, honestly. That that I'm trying to gauge how much food I need for each one. I didn't mention it, but that common grackle is something I'm debating as well at this point because I talked about my egg issue. If I could get the grackle in the forest, that may be worthwhile. I think it takes me a little bit to realize that. It's been a long time since I've played a grackle in the forest. Uh, usually that's a wetland option for me or a grassland option. So I'm... Um, 
I don't have the grackle in the forefront of my mind. I'm playing the Snowy Owl just to see if I can get lucky on a bonus card, uh, which we don't. Um, <laughs> we get Fishery Manager, but that's a bonus card that looks like by my Spoonbill and the King Rail, it will score me some extra points down the road. But yeah, that grackle is, I'm debating whether it's too late in the game, but then I'm thinking it's gonna save me egg lane turns with the last nine turns in the game. And I do wanna play Spoonbill, I do wanna play uh, that other bonus card, King Rail. And you know, that that's pretty much the game plan. We were late on the Wood Duck, but we chose the Wood Duck. And so win or lose, I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna upload this one uh, just because it's a little bit unconventional. And we denied playing the usual common raven. So here we go with the snowy owl. We laid an egg, and that gave us two eggs for this grackle play right here. Hoping it pays off. And you can see I'm just taking my time, making sure that's really what I want to do. <laughs> um, the people that dissect this game from a math perspective can tell me whether that was a worthwhile play or not. I'm going to say yes at this point in time. Uh, the Grackle also lets me have five birds in a row, which is nice for our end of round competition. And it got me two points right there. And I'd really like to see a Eurasian Collar Dove or a Swift or a House Sparrow. Uh, those are those teal powers that let you discard extra food for tucks. And when you're running a forest engine, check out that European goldfinch. When you're running a forest engine and you have all this unnecessary food, a house sparrow or a uh, Eurasian colored dove, it feels like would help me seal the deal on this game. We do not pull those teal powers, but we do get a European goldfinch right in time. Uh, my, my opponent just played a catbird. They have the Violet Green Swallow. We overlooked that in the commentary, but Violet Green Squ Swallow, we would have really liked to have that. That would have been a good food web expert bird. But now they've got two, uh, I think they have two tucking birds with a cat bird. Um, I need to flash to the other player's screen here in a second. But the Goldfinch has already gotten a tuck. I like that pink power if you can get it down in the game. And here we are, the last turn in the game, really just stacking up because other than these two wetland birds, I need something else. And we pull a golden eye and a bittern. The bittern's nothing, but the golden eye has potential. It's another fisher, uh, fishery manager bird. And, um,. If I can get the golden eye and the goldfinch down, that's shaving two points off of my opponent's grassland engine. And this goldfinch uh, came in clutch already. We've got two pink power tucks and we won our third end of round goal. Um, and here we go. Starting round four, we have a Says Phoebe in the tray, which immediately catches my eye. Actually, I lied. It doesn't immediately catch my eye. I'm focused on playing this golden eye. We don't have any seeds, but I'm hoping I force down this golden eye right here. But that says Phoebe, if I can grab that, that's another food web expert bird. And so that'll be three five and then with all the eggs we will say one two three four five six 
Yeah, so six eggs plus the five points, that's, that's gonna be an 11 point bird, I believe, if I can grab to say's Phoebe. I think I play it a little bit risky here. Um, my opponent plays the Godwit, and you know the Godwit lets you draw three cards, and he didn't deny the Says Phoebe. So I'm debating whether I grab the Says Phoebe now or play the Golden Eye, and I decide to play the Golden Eye first, which is very risky, I think. Uh, Says Phoebe is a big point boost. But I'm thinking since he didn't deny it with the Godwit, um, I'm going to take advantage of this pink power for the last four turns of the game. And uh, maybe he can get me some extra eggs. Yeah, I want to do the math on that Says Phoebe again. It's three points when you play it, plus five with the bonus card. And here's where my opponent could do his tuck and draw and deny it. So this, at this point, I, I'm holding my breath that I can get the Says Phoebe. After the five points, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I, I think it's 11 point play. And then I really need my bonus cards to come through. Um, if not, as good as this wood duck can be, it doesn't produce points on its own. It needs uh, birds to help it. So I could again play bonus cards right now. He didn't deny save, says Phoebe or she, whoever my opponent is. I could play a bonus card, see what we get, and then that may dictate my other plays. But I think the Says Phoebe, even with a bonus card draw, 11 point boost is still worth it. And so I'm not gonna be able to take advantage of the Grackle on this activation, but we are going to grab the needed Phoebe in hopes we can catch up because I think we're a little behind. With two eggs, I'm not feeling 100% confident in this game. And we pull a few other useless birds, unfortunately. I think I'm, I'm really hoping for a late game puffin. I've got three fish in my supply, uh, but we were not able to do that. A wild turkey populates in the tray, but we have three turns left and I need to be scoring some points. And that food activation that I just did don't think scored me any points because we didn't activate the Grackle. Uh, so um, it is what it is What it is at this point. We're going to qualify for the minimum on the fishery manager. I go ahead and do the, the Phoebe bomb right here. But I've said this many times before, um, bonus cards in the late game, if, especially if you have a lot of birds on the board, uh, you have a good chance of success. Um, so I, you know, in my head, I'm just doing mental math. I, I usually add three or four points to my expected return when I play a bonus card bird. So with the rail, you know, I'm hoping for three points there and, and hoping for three points at least in with, with the spoon bill. Um, Laying eggs only gets me four points at this point. So uh, th there's not a whole lot of other options. Like I said, I would have liked to have one of those teal power birds. Um, there's that puffin. My opponent plays the puffin. So game three, this is tight as expected. Alexandra is a really good player uh, from what I can tell. And it's game three. Come on, Spoonbill. What do we get? Wildlife Gardener, seven points. That is what I needed. So that turned into a 12 point play by itself. The Phoebe was 11 point play. That was really nice. 
we've got what 12 birds on the board um, that definitely helped new players you need to shoot for at least a minimum of nine birds on your board if you're getting less than nine birds on your board that's just master wing throwing out stuff that's not official my opponent plays Benelli's eagle that aggravates me uh here's this king rail really hoping we pull something nice here it's only a two-point play by itself i need to make up ground for that benelli's eagle he just hit and we get six points either bonus card i think we take behaviorist just for flex points but yeah New players, try to get above nine, nine birds if you can. That gives you at least a shot to win or score decent, you know, maybe in the 80s or so. Thanks for watching. Here's the scores. I'm not sure if we have enough to overcome a Benelli's point bomb. And check out our advantage on the bonus cards. And our end around goals was clutch. The eggs and his tux 99 98 it doesn't get much closer than that other than like a food tie win what a game he had backyard birder visionary leader so he whiffed on his bonus cards and that benelli's eagle i thought it it killed me man we got some good pulls thanks for watching see you next time on master wing peace